Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, this is Alex. See, that's the big red letters there. It says Alex. It's got to be me. And this is the Ramble, and we go till midnight tonight on the East Coast of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, that face you see before you is Stephen Kravitz. And Stephen was, uh, was, uh, was asking me how many people watch this. And yes, I, I, was. I told him I don't know really. It's 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 a goodly um, a goodly amount. I have more people than most people get, but right. less people than the successful people get. So <laughs> you know, it, it's, so you're in the middle. Yeah, you know, I think maybe we we probably an average show tops out at about five hundred people. You know, really, and I wish I had more, but you know, I'm an old man doing a show, and uh, uh, the fact is that people who watch this, uh, watch uh, uh, blogs and things like that, and and videos on YouTube, are all kids. No kidding. So if I did makeup hints, maybe I might make more money. You know, I might (laughs) might get. Oh, there's there's a woman on here who gives makeup hints. That had what did I see? Ten million viewers. The makeup tips. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, she has more viewers than a TV network has in prime time. Yeah, no kidding, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So you know, and I'm sitting here going, "What the fuck am I doing this for?" You know. You're doing it because you love it. I'm doing it because no, because it, it it supposedly keeps me alive. If I didn't do this, I would just completely vegetate. I mean, it's right. ba- it's bad enough with this COVID that I just don't go out at all. Right. That's how I gained all this weight was not going out and just eating. Well, it's called the COVID fifteen. The COVID what? Fifteen. Uh, it, it's COVID fifteen. It's a, it's the weight you gain. Everybody gains about fifteen pounds. I gain. I've gained about fifteen pounds. Yeah. Yeah. But I go out and uh, I find I'm my. It's harder for me to walk. Right, <laughs> you know, my legs are weak, uh, and uh, you know, and I decide I want to go out, but now I have to do you, and then after this, I probably have to order some food from Costco to be delivered. Really? Yeah, so I'm not getting out today. <laughs> no walk, no walk after right. this. Right now, when we recorded this, it was a couple of weeks ago. Okay. Right. Uh, I'm assuming it was a couple of weeks ago when we recorded this. Okay. And um, uh, it's uh, uh, just uh, uh, now. What was I going to say? See, I'm out no, of, no, no, I'm recording out of the this two weeks oh, ago. Yeah, and uh, so we don't know exactly what the condition of things are. I mean, already as we're recording this, the COVID is up to like a hundred and thirty-seven thousand people yesterday. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I looked at that number and I went, my God. And do you realize, Alex, they say it still hasn't peaked yet. We're going to hit for another uh, yeah. round of really bad time. Now, I was watching Dr. Fauci. He said less people are dying, but only because we know better how to handle these oh, really? cases. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, when this thing first hit, when it first hit New York, New York lost, God, 25,000 people. Sure. You know, uh, if if it just hit today with what we know. Right. It wouldn't be anywhere near that. And and if our president had taken proper action. Well, if he had taken proper action, that certainly would have helped mitigate it. If he told everybody to wear masks, that would have mitigated it. Right, you know. right. Uh, and, uh, but the fact is that, that he didn't do anything about it. And uh, but what 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 it was is we were the first ones to get hit with this, and we didn't know it's exactly. Hard. We did, yeah, and we didn't know how to handle it. You see, we didn't know how to, how do you what medicines do you give people? Right. We were we were making it up as we went along, and that's how we yep. lost twenty five thousand people initially to COVID. 
right? uh, today I would say that amount might be maybe five thousand. Yeah. You know, if yeah. with all the knowledge we have now, one of the pe you know, one of the simple pieces of knowledge that we gained out of this. What's that? Was if somebody has it, you keep turning them in the bed. What do Put, you mean? Putting them on their chest, then right. turning them, put them on their back, and right. rotate them, put them back on their, yeah. That that has minimized the deaths. Something as simple really? as that, yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. You know, and then they had to have all these other uh, therapeutics that, that have come out, you know, that have right. helped. But uh, they say also the the symptoms linger. Yes. I mean, after you're, you're okay, it's still like post-traumatic stress syndrome. Well, they're saying that the problem is that a lot of people are getting after effects. I mean, that they, they yeah, they get cured of COVID, they go home, but they've right. got symptoms and things going on for a long time after that. Long time. Long, long time. So, you know. Well, that's why, that's why I wear a mask. Of course you wear a mask. You also wear a mask because you respect me and I wear a mask because I respect you. That's correct. It's That's just, correct. Wearing it, a mask is not selfish. It's selfless. Yes. But I mean, right? but the fact is that, and, and you know what Fauci said they found out today, they, they assumed that the reason you wear a mask is so you won't infect somebody else. That's they right. wear masks so they won't affect you. So it's a reciprocal thing. You're not doing it for you. You're doing it for them. What I don't get now, out with No, that. but now he says what they found is that it does protect you. Sure. Yeah. Well, you know what I don't get, Alex, is these people that wear a mask but don't cover their nose. Oh, you mean the, the people who wear them as chin guards? Yes. I mean, that's like going out and tying only one shoe. It's yeah. It's like uh, uh, wearing a condom and then cutting a hole in the bottom of it from the <laughs> because you like a little more air there. You know? yeah. yeah. Right. 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 I mean, uh, it, it. Yeah. No. People who wear the masks uh, uh, here. Okay. Yes. I go. I don't know. Uh, do, do you do you understand that that's not what we're really worried about? Is your is your is your mouth? I do my best to understand everything I can. What? I, I didn't say anything to this. Did you hear that? Yeah, what was that? That was my my, my Alexa. <laughs> or actually, I, I call it something else because yeah. it is called something else. Is it I really? I can't use that name because if I use the name... It'll talk. It'll talk. Of course, then I can go, Hey, Samuel, say something explicit. What the fuck is happening, my friend? <laughs> Sounds like my act. Yeah, yeah. That's Samuel L. Jackson. Is that right? Yeah. He, I can ask him, Samuel, hey, Samuel, what's the temperature? Right now, it's 71 degrees Fahrenheit. Tonight, expect a low of 62 degrees. See? What a great day. Yeah, yeah. Alex, you got to go outside. Well, I know I'm good. I want to go outside. It's beautiful out there, but I I don't know. I gotta I gotta order my food. See, it's always an excuse. Right. That'll take what? All of two minutes. Well, I've been making up an excuse why I can't get my eyes done. Okay. Right. Well, you never know. mind your eyes right now. Why don't you go for a walk after this? Well, because I I in huff and puff and I feel like I'm dying. So you're a little neurotic mm -hmm. and maybe a little bit of a hypochondriac. Oh, you didn't you didn't know me that well, did you? No, I do. Oh, OK. That's why I was saying it. Yeah. Yeah. The hypochondriac. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I often said that on my tombstone, it's going to read. See, I told you I was sick. Right, 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 right. That's a great thing for a tombstone. Yeah. Yeah. But my wife is not going to uh, let me have a tombstone. Really? You're going to get cremated? Yes, yeah, she wants me cremated. She wants to crispy fry me. Really? Yeah. And I don't want that because, you know, we don't know what happens afterwards. I might need everything. And when you right. show up, if you're just an ash, they go, sorry, you know, you're not coming in here. You right. Look, did you, did you, you tell you her look, that? You look terrible. Yeah. <laughs> you, know. you look burnt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, well, I, you know, she's got her, her mitts out on me. Of course, I've got still, before I die, I've got to get a tombstone for my mother's grave. See, I got one for my mother's grave. 
Yeah, how how long would it go without a tombstone? Uh, she passed in 77, mm -hmm. and me and my brothers put up a headstone in 85. Uh, well, you see, my mother died, uh, what was it, uh, about, is it 20 years ago? I don't know, what year did she die? No, I was out here. I was out here at the time. Huh. Maybe 2004, 2005, something really? like that. Yeah. And you, you oh, know oh, I, I know what it was. It was, two, it was 2005, I think, yeah, because she was 100 years old. Right. You know why I, I got the, uh, we got bought the headstone? Yeah. Because I went to visit her grave. She only had the plaque. Mm -hmm. And I'm there in the winter, and I couldn't find her grave. Yeah. And I kind of lost it. Well, I felt guilty about this for the longest time because I just never gotten one. And then I found other people uh, have done the same thing and forgot <laughs> not gotten around to getting a tombstone for their, you know, their parent or whatever, you know. Yeah, you know, it's a nice thing. Yeah. Well, I, I, as I tell people, I, I, you know, part of the problem is that for years I haven't known what to put on the tombstone, and I finally figured it out. What are you going to put? It's going to go, uh, here lies, uh, um, I'm going to get one tombstone for both of them. Right, Cause of course. Because they, they have, there's one for him, but not for her. So I figured, if that, I could just chisel an extra name on there, I know. <laughs> but anyway, I, I was thinking of, of just putting up a tombstone, here lies uh, Alexander Schwarzman and Ruth Schwarzman. Uh, right. Parents of... Uh, and then in big letters, Alex Bennett. <laughs> Go for it. Well, I want to get my money's it. worth. Come on. I need Go the publicity. God knows nobody writes me up anymore. I need at least to have my name on a tombstone. Cause... <laughs> now, do you really want your name on a tombstone? Well, I don't know. But once Marjorie turns me into a crispy critter, you know, I'm just going to be a, an etching on an urn. You know. Are you going to have your ashes sprinkled anywhere? Uh, uh, I, I don't know. You know, my ex-wife died, Ronnie. Oh, I didn't know you her. Didn't, you didn't know her. Uh, but she just died. And uh, they're bringing her ashes to New York, and we're going to sprinkle them in New York City. And I said to the person who's going to do it, I said, I think that's illegal, isn't it? She says, watch me. <laughs> right, 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 right. Ronnie wanted to be sprinkled in New York City, so we're going to sprinkle her ashes in New York City. I would like to have some of my ashes sprinkled in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh huh. And some of them on my mother's grave. Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, if I could get somebody to do it, I'd like some in the Pacific Ocean also, but that's a little too much to ask. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't know where I would want them scattered. I've never thought about that, you know. I'm not going to know it. I'm not going to feel it, you know. <laughs> no, yeah, you're not going to be aware of it that we know of. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm use me as mulch or something, you know, for some That's, plants. That's right, right. You know, so when the plants grow, at least there's some of me in those plants. Right. Does that make now, sense? Are you, you going to be buried in a Jewish cemetery? Uh, well, I can be. I don't have a tattoo. No, uh, that's not true, Alex. You can have tattoos. Really? That's right. I the rabbinical committee in Israel said it was okay to be buried with tattoos. Yes, but that's because of the tattoos from the Holocaust. No, that's why you couldn't be buried with tattoos. I have tattoos. I have four tattoos. Really? They, I didn't know that. They, they are the size of a hat pin. Because what when do you I have? well when I got the uh, when I got the radiation for the prostate cancer, right? They put little tattoos on you so they have a place to <laughs> aim aim the stuff. So and I I pulled the joke to them, well I guess I'll never be buried in a Jewish cemetery and they were very serious. They said, "Oh no, we've been told to tell our Jewish friends." that uh, they have said it's okay if you get this right. kind of tattoo because it's for medical purposes. Right, but I spoke to a rabbi, mm -hmm. and I asked him about tattoos, and he said you can be buried in consecrated ground with tattoos these days. They changed it. Well, well, they better because there's so many goddamn people getting tattoos. That right, never... Especially in Israel. All the millenniums are like tattooed from head to toe. Wow. Well, is that what it takes for Israel to go tattoo? 
Right, 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 right. Yeah. To change you the know, whole the whole orthodoxy. Although I don't think there's a tattoo business open right now, is there? I doubt it. I doubt it. But who knows? I don't know. I don't get tattoos, so I don't know. Do you have tattoos? Yeah. I have five. You have five. Okay, you have tattoos. Okay. I got both of my legs, mm -hmm. my shoulders, mm -hmm. and one on my uh, shoulder blade. Wow. Wow. Well, anyway. Hey, listen, we've run out of time. Is that it? We have, it the we, tattoos? Have, we have fun talking. That's what it, it is. It goes by fast. It really does. You are terrific. I Thank like you. I like you a lot, Stephen Kravitz. Well, I like you a lot, Mr. Bennett. Yeah. Thank you very much. Stephen Kravitz, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for listening. He's over there. He's over there. There he is. Okay. Bye. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And there's Stephen, and here's Alex, and, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, another day in the neighborhood, another day in the neighborhood. Well, uh, let's see here. We probably should uh, start admitting people into our, into our waiting, from our waiting room uh, into uh, the program. And uh, there they are. Let me see here if we're... Um, uh, we have uh, Steve's iPhone there, but Steve, you don't have a picture. You don't have a picture. Uh, let me see here. Let me admit Jeffrey Stein. I know who Steve is. I'm just waiting to see, have him. Uh, um, uh, let me see. Robert Natali is in the waiting room. There we go. We'll bring him in. Steve, are you there? Can you hear us? Steve. He's still connecting, it says. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it says um, Steve's iPhone is connecting to audio, but it's not doing anything else. I may have to, like, hang up on him here. Uh, he says something. He, he has called the program. I think he's Steve that calls the program on Mondays. And um, he should know how to use his stuff, you know. But apparently he's not, and he's got a problem. So, Steve, I'm going to hang up on you and just try it again, okay? All right. Hello to everybody else. How are you this evening? Good. Great. Yeah, yeah, doing great. Uh, and look, Brian Ludwig is with us tonight. Hello, Brian. Good evening. Yeah. Hello. And, uh, of course, Robert Natale and Brian Neary and... How's my hair dye? Is it is it running? Or is yeah, it's a little little streaky <laughs> over here. You know, can although I'm not I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it, okay? But can he have any more bad luck? It reminds me of Trump walking up to the Air Force One with toilet paper on his yeah. foot. Yeah. First of all, he gets Trump. He gets uh, Trump by Borat, okay? All right, yeah. uh, and then uh, he has this thing today where he gives a rambling press conference that makes no sense at all, making statements that he can't prove, and uh, it's uh, 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 there is not dye; it's like hair dye that's dripping because he's sweating. Now, look, I used to wear hair dye. Okay, I used to dye my hair. I don't know if anybody else here ever did it, but oh, I did. Sure. Huh? Did you try I did it for years? Right. Did you ever have it drip? No. No. Why did his drip? And on both sides. Did you notice it was like on yeah, both sides? Both sides. It yeah. almost got to look like he was, Oh, hello there. There's there's Steve. Oh. How are you, Steve? A anyway, uh, are you there, Steve? Can you hear us? I'm here. Okay, good. Uh it looked like, you know, kind of like one of those hip sideburns that <laughs> that people get, you know, these little, 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 little trails down there, you know. I thought uh, he was bleeding. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just, the shit was coming out of his ears. But it was on both sides. At first I'm going, ha, ha, ha. And then you go over to the other side and there he is. You know, same thing. 
going to town on it. So yeah. you would think twenty thousand dollars a day would get you a better job, right? Yeah, there it is. Somebody's got a picture of it. Oh, is that the? That's even a more massive oh, drip yeah. than the one I saw. <laughs> Everyone got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, um, how many? How much? How much more? There is the other side, right? There you go. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. We leave it to Kevin to come up with that kind of stuff. Did you? Uh, did you? Did you piss your pants when you saw that? Oh, I was just. I was just waiting for it. It's almost like the fly on the head, you know. <laughs> yeah. I had to rewind it to watch it. It was hilarious. It was a comedy show. Yeah, yeah. It was terrible. Just terrible. And then he said that this this whole election thing was is the worst crime he's ever seen. Didn't he? Wasn't he the mayor during 9 11? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is the worst crime I've ever seen before. Yep. He was also a lawyer who took on the mafia in this and this And his favorite movie was Vinny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really, dude? He, oh, my God. Believe me, he isn't as good a, a lawyer as Vinny turned out to be. <laughs> you know? Uh, boy, uh, that. Uh, well, we we all love when that happens to somebody like Rudy, you know. It, it, we sit here laughing out of Schadenfreude. You know. The only thing I got out of that press conference was the fact that they were all collecting money off of Trump. Yep. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, no, well, yeah, they all they all getting paychecks. That's all they were no, doing. No, wait a yeah. minute, wait a minute. They're being told they will get a paycheck. Well, well yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. who? What do we know more about Trump than anything else? The one lesson yeah. in don't life. Pay his bills. It was the lesson in life he was taught by Roy Cohn: don't ever yeah. pay your bills. Okay, and so he never does. That's right. why people don't like to work for him. You know, um, but. Uh, and where do they get the three million dollars to take to Wisconsin? That's what I want to know. You know, where did that come from? Uh, what are you playing with there? A pubic hair or something, uh, Brian Ludwig? No, I'm just. Uh... <laughs> okay. No. What was that? You just uh, like you were going like, uh, you know, a little thing there. Just distracted. I'm sorry. Steve, where are you calling from? From my home. Where? Well, of course, but where? <laughs> London, Ontario. Canada. London, Ontario. Oh, so Canada. we have somebody out of the country tonight. I see. That's good. How's uh, how's all the COVID thing up there? I hear it's worse in Canada right now. Uh, it's getting worse, yeah. It's, um, so far in London, it's not too bad. Like We did go out to eat uh, at a fast food place today. Yeah. Uh, so far, so they haven't locked us down, but I don't know how much longer it's going to last. Yeah. You haven't had a problem very much up there. It's been pretty good. Uh, it's been pretty good. Like, we, I had, based, we had a fairly normal summer. Um, I mean, I did go to the beach like five times this year. Yeah. When I wasn't driving truck. Yeah. Um, so it's... Hasn't been too bad. Yeah. But bad back in April and March. Right. But the summer yeah. got better. <clears throat> but it started worse again. Yeah. By the way, your uh, your phone, because you're holding it, you're making a little bit of noise with it with your hand. So when you're not, uh, excuse me, I'm, I, I'm getting myself a cough drop here. <laughs> My throat is dry tonight. Uh, when you're not when you're not talking. Just mute yourself, okay? Okay. Okay, because you can see there that you can mute because it, because it's make, it makes some noise there. But we were just, right now it's not obviously. Um, wow. Yeah, there. You know, uh, I'm beginning to think. Uh, I, I be, sometimes I wonder why I go on at all at night because there's not a lot to talk about anymore. I mean, <laughs> it's the same thing every day. I mean, I watch MSNBC and I go, how long are they going to continue this tap dance? You know, because really, all you can do is complain about the fact that Trump won't let Biden get the stuff and the debt, the debt, the debt, and that's over and over and over again. And it, where once Trump was the gift that kept on giving for broadcasters, he's not anymore. 
He's just a bore, you know, who's embarrassing the United States of America, and he's embarrassing himself. If he left with a little dignity, he, it might be a, you know, a monument to him somewhere, but there's not going to be. I mean, what is his legacy going to be after this is all over? Does he care? Don't you think he cares? I would care. He's, gol he's golfing the last two weekends. Yeah. Think he yeah. cares? He doesn't Come on. Care about, he certainly doesn't care about the country. No, but is, nope. is golfing his way of saying to you, uh, hey, I'm not being affected by this? You know? Uh, I mean, it, I, I'm cool yeah. about it. We know he's not cool about it. He's probably throwing stuff off the off the off the balconies at the White House, you know, like staff members. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Hi, Tony. Oh, did you see Rudy Giuliani? Today? Yes, I know. <laughs> what do you think we were talking? First thing we were talking about. <laughs> Kevin had up the pictures of him. Alex, I was walking to stop a shop and I heard that. I was getting beef stew for my mom and me for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. He quoted my cousin Vinny as a fucking defense? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you gotta be fucking kidding yeah. me. We're gonna roll out Pesci? It, it, yeah. Oh my God. I, he make it better. He's fucking, Trump must have the goods on this guy. He has to. No, 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 no. I think it's the other way around. You think so? Well, I mean, there are a lot of goods to have on Rudy. I mean, Rudy has been one of the crookedest people around. You know, America's mayor, my ass. I'm starting to worry. I'm starting to wonder how he got elected now. Who? Giuliani. Yeah, they gave him the bad guys probably because... Well, you know, if you, go back, if you go back and you watch Giuliani in the day, okay, mm -hmm. I never liked him, but when 9-11 came, he hit all the right notes, okay? You know, um, didn't hit every I right note. I seem to remember that. I, I keep hearing people say that. No, you know what he did? He went. But I swear to you, I don't remember that. Well, no, what he did is he went on the air every day and he told people what was ostensibly what he, what was going on. It may not have been what was really going on, but he said it, okay? And he kept people informed that way. And so in that way, he wrote the textbook, I mean, that even a guy like Cuomo now is using during the pandemic, even Cuomo is using, to be just out there telling the public what's going on. Now, what he didn't tell people that was going on is that the reason why World Trade Center number eight, which was the other building that went up, blew up, was because uh, he stored all the gasoline for the city's, um, uh, what can we call it? Uh, uh, you know, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? But, but he, they stored all the gasoline there for uh, emergencies. Emergencies, emergencies, right? Mm -hmm. And they told him, don't put it there. You know, put it somewhere where it isn't close to the center of town. It was there, and that's what blew up. So, you know, he was, he was a piece of shit, but he did handle it correctly. I mean, he handled it to... Uh, would, uh, tell me, Robert, where I'm wrong about this. I don't think I, I'm not saying you're wrong. I just I swear to you, I have no memory of him doing anything remarkable except showing up at Yankee and Met games when they resumed playing baseball. Other than that, I don't remember how it is that suddenly he became embraced as a ma America's mayor. I, I just don't see it. I never did. They always had him on the news. Representing New York and calming everybody down and all that. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what he. That's why he got the reputation was because he was the face of the tragedy. Okay, right. he was the face of keeping everything calm. Guy married his cousin for crying. Well, I know that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we realize that. Really? Yeah. yeah. Yep. But he I mean, dumped. He dumped his wife. Publicly, hey, 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 to Russell. marry his cousin. Well, wait a minute. Ro <laughs> Roosevelt was married to his cousin. Yeah, well, all right. I, all right. So is Carlo one. Gambino. What? So is Carlo Gambino. Married to his cousin? Correct. Yeah, well, you know, I think that tends to be, uh, maybe it's a good thing. I mean, it's not a bad thing. I don't know. But, um, 
Uh, Rudy Giuliani, um, uh, he, he well, let's see here. He, his wife, his second wife. Uh, uh, I'm trying to remember her name now, and it's like it's on the tip of my brain. Judy Nathan. Jo Judy Nathan. Um, she was an actress, right? No, I don't who recall. was the actress he was married to? No, he was married to a newswoman, Donna Hanover. That's it. Okay. And uh, he divorced her, and I think he did it in some kind of untoward way. Yeah, to the point where his own son doesn't speak to him to this day. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. How did he, how did son, he, I can't remember, it was some horrible way he delivered her the news. Yeah, he, well, it was all kind of done in public, like the dirty laundry was all out there actually, for everybody he actually to did see. A, he did a press release saying he was leaving his wife, and she didn't hear about it till she read she the press. That's how she heard. That, yeah. that was it. That was yeah, it. Yeah, on the news. That's yeah, how she heard. Yeah, something like that. That's almost ba as bad as Newt Gingrich, who delivered yeah. the word to yeah. his wife that he was going to divorce her while she was lying in bed with cancer. Dying. Oh, yeah. yeah. She didn't die, by the way. Oh, did she? I, no. think, I think him no. leaving her gave her reason to live. I see. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I see. <laughs> Boy, there's some skeezy, skeezy Republicans out there. By the way, Steve, being from Canada, do you care about any of this? I mean, does it really matter to you guys up there? Uh, well, we do follow your politics a little bit. Yeah. It does affect our country economically, too. So yeah. I, I'm following it. Well, ever since I listened to your show when you were on Sirius, I started following it. Yeah. And and what what is your thinking about it? And what, what are, how are people taking what's going on down here now? Uh, most Canadians can't stand Trump. There, there, are, there are a few up here who are... Trump wannabes. Trump wannabes? Yeah. I mean, in what respect? But, you know, we have our fair share of idiots, too, but... Yeah. <laughs> I know one in Toronto. <laughs> you know one in Toronto? Who are you referring yeah. to, Kevin? Uh, it just uh, I know somebody in Toronto. Oh, you know somebody in Toronto. Yeah. I thought you were maybe mentioning some kind of political person up no, there. No, 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 that's a, that's a all-Trump... All the time, yeah, yeah. So you know, it, it's uh, but you know, uh, you 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 got COVID now, and you weren't letting Americans into Canada because we had COVID. Oh, are, and the only I'm a truck driver, so I'm the only one, along with the other guys in the industry that are allowed to cross. That's it. That's it. We're <clears throat> letting people fly, and that's the thing. I said this to a few people. They should have shut down the FAA once this COVID started to outbreak. Mm -hmm. Shut down all international flights. Shut down all international bus traffic, uh, cruise ship traffic, mm -hmm. all of it. Just stop it right no, there. No, we're just stopping all travel. We're t stopping all travel of people from China who want to come here, and yet people from China were still coming here. Chinese could go not just to Europe; they could go to any country. Of course, that's and why they put the FAA because the FAA plans all the flight plans, flight plans for all the airlines. Yeah, yeah. Well, I but mean, I but if, it, they but had, they, if they had probably, if they had uh, done that, it would have saved lives down here in New York because we got all those about three million people coming through JFK many of which had COVID and then went into Manhattan and spread it. And this town just got, you, you remember how bad it was back then, you know. Yeah. It's gotten a little worse lately than it has been, but it's not never going back to as bad as it was. Yes, Charlie. And speaking of going back as bad as it was, we had 2,000 people die in the U.S. today. First time since May. Yep. We had over 2,000. Oh, boy. Ugh. When, oh, when, shit. Yeah, when, when, when is, read this? 
What? I see that Republicans are at Munchkin's, uh, Stephen Munchkin. He's cutting Mnuchin. the uh, Mnuchin. Mnuchin. Yeah, Mnuchin. 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 I'm going to call him Munchkin. I'm going to call him Munchkin. You know, Munchkin. By the way, He's you know the, the, guy, lady. the guy who was supposed to do my eyes, I and mean, we were going to do it eventually, but yeah. my eyes are killing me today. Again, the, some, something in the air in this apartment. I don't know what it is. I go out and I feel better, but the guy who was going to do my eyes, his brother in law is Stephen Mnuchin. Really? And he says the whole family hates him. Anyway, go ahead. Um, they're cutting the federal aid off, Alex, I heard. I'm just reading it. The emergency money. Oh, I no. guess Trump's starting to really blow everything up. Here we go. Oh, no, he wanted to attack Iran. Uh, what yeah, else has he done? He got thing. rid of the head of, uh, of uh, the... Uh, Homeland Security. Was it Homeland Security? Or it wasn't Homeland Security. Oh, yeah. It was, um, it was election security. Election security, yeah. 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 Election. yeah. Can I say this as a true patriot? Would anybody really care if somebody took him out now? Took who out? <laughs> the big huh? white, the guy in the there is a guy. Hey, hey, who uh, uh, The guy we like to refer to as the big Cheeto. Yeah. yeah he's not yeah. white. I don't think he's white. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm sorry. I no, he, he, is a, he is a he color is that's... going that's, out in a bang, Alex. He is, a, he is a color that's not found in nature. Okay. Uh, Tony, you have come on this program far too often. I know you're right. I have, I need wishing to ill on our vaunted president mm -hmm. of the United States. Do you realize yeah. that because it's being broadcast here on this program? But I never said his name. Tomorrow, YouTube could say, "That's it, oh, no more. We don't put that kind of stuff on the air." So just say uh, you're kidding. I'm kidding. About okay. the big orange yeah, yeah, Cheeto. The big orange Cheeto. Okay. You're kidding. <laughs> Although, I'll tell you, I'll tell you that I, I don't think that the kind of feeling you have is necessarily that unusual. You know, I mean, people are, you know, uh, in my when I go to sleep at night, I put my head down on the pillow. It's not like I exactly have good thoughts for his future. Okay. I mean, did you ever think Alex he would go out like this? I mean, he's getting bad to worse. Well, I know you know you know who predicted this whole thing. Bill Maher for the last almost <laughs> two years has been saying yep. Trump, when he loses, will refuse to leave office. And he, he was would running. ask he he asked everybody all those political people he had. Yeah, and he like, asked them the last question he would ask: What are we yeah. going to do when he doesn't want to leave? And they would all laugh at him. Yeah. Yeah. Now they're, they're, oh, they're laughing out of their ass. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it. the latest thing is he's bringing a bunch of Republicans in tomorrow from Michigan. Oh, I heard. People that are in the, uh, the, uh, the uh, state Senate there. Yeah, they have a majority. Yeah. Uh, to try and convince them to make the electoral votes for him. Because they can do that. They could. They oh, can oh, do right. that. They don't do that. They don't do it because that's not the spirit in which the electoral college was intended. Okay? But he's going to try and get them to give him the electoral votes. Even if he gets them from Michigan, it's not going to put him over the top. Okay? Now I love it when people say that. You're going to love this, Kevin. Do you ever watch, do you ever, Kevin, do you ever watch Newsmax? No. Oh, you got to do it. It's just a delight. <laughs> Is it? It's another world. It's just like, it's like Bizarro Land, okay? Fox. I'm watching it today, and they showed a map of the United States and the Electoral College, <sighs> and who's got what, <laughs> and, uh, and Biden hasn't won yet. He only has like he only has like two hundred and forty five electoral votes to Trump's two hundred and thirty something. On their Still back, counting, huh? they won't give him Arizona, they won't <laughs> give him Pennsylvania, they won't give him Georgia, they won't give him <clears throat> Michigan, they won't give him Wisconsin, and to this day they're not putting it up there like he like uh, it's over. What are they waiting for the trucks to back up or what? Uh, it's just, it's another world. Now, I thought to myself, suppose you're a doofus out there who finds that uh, Newsmax speaks to you. 
And this is the oh, only God. information you get. Yep. You don't think Biden has gotten uh, the electoral votes yet. And there's nothing there. Problem I mean, is, they, hmm? problem is, there's people out there like that. Yeah, but I mean, there's I, those people that we talked about that actually go to Facebook for all their news. I brought Marjorie in to look at it. Okay, and I said, "Look at this," and she said, "What's that?" I said, "That's the electoral vote on Newsmax, which is a right-wing organization." And she just she had her mouth open all the rest of the day. You know, just she was so gobsmacked by what she saw. She said, I can't believe somebody's doing that. And I said, you better believe it, you know. So, and you know, Biden, more than six million votes ahead now. What? And popular vote. Biden's got more than a six million vote lead on, on Trump now. Jeez. He's also gotten more votes than anybody uh, who ran for president. Uh, but, yeah, so, yeah. but so is Trump. I just meant his lead is growing by day. So if they're going to somehow reverse yeah. this election but the second it's going to be so yeah. obvious no country in the world is going to take us serious the second largest amount was is trump's oddly enough yes um yeah. uh, uh brian ludwig mm -hmm. uh yeah two things one is uh not only has yeah more people of color have voted for trump this time around oddly enough mostly men though men of uh other ethnic like, African American, okay, but uh, yeah, I know, I know. But uh, the other thing is, uh, I wanted to say was that there's this new social media app and site called Parlor. Yeah, no, that's I know that. Kind of posturing itself as the Newsmax of social media. So, y yeah. There's... Um, but it, it, you know, I mean, it just it 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 showed me why some people are so misinformed in this country because they go, they find the news source. It best aligns itself with their political beliefs, and then that news source plays to them. And Down part the of rabbit. playing to them is to make them believe that the Electoral College is not a, a done deal, which it is now. Today, Georgia came in. The Georgia State uh, Secretary of State, I think, uh, said um, Biden has won. And Just the, that's the recount, right? right? Yeah. That was the recount, and they say the recount wasn't off. It was pretty, it was damn close. I mean, it was within, yeah. you know. 10, 20 votes, something like that. Yeah. But what they, do you guys think about um, uh, what's that, that the senator from South Carolina who tried to... Um, Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham. Yeah, Lindsey Graham, yeah. 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 Mr. Right. What about those, those people in Michigan that refused to certify the Detroit vote for a while? I thought they got they a call from Trump. I thought they got a call, right? Yeah. They went to Georgia and tried to get them to throw out votes. Yeah, they wanted to throw out a certain sector, like 140,000 votes. I heard. Yeah, yeah. Well, these guys are not really. Well, he's he's got the feeling that if it was a Democratic vote, it was it was fake. And yeah. Alex, how is Rudy gonna? Rudy saying, uh, "Oh, it's from the Democratic, you know, uh, states." This guy won in a Democratic state. Rudy can't show his face here anymore. I think, either he's got to have to pack it up. And oh, move the I just read something where Ivanka. Uh, can't even show her face in New York now. Oh, yeah. She can't even move back here with Jared. All the social groups they used to hang out with, yeah. Yeah, they don't, they they just don't, They. she's not considered. Uh, her and Jared. Huh? Yeah. yeah, her and Jared. Yeah. So they're never going to be able to come back here. Uh, Trump, oh, baby. Uh, Trump is never going to be able to come back here. Uh Cuomo said uh, at one point, and we hope he never does, good riddance, you know. Um, yeah. His, Rudy, I'm not close to him. Huh? Rudy, Rudy, I think, ran his ticket out of New York now for me personally. I don't I don't think he could, after this whole debacle, how he's carrying on, I can't say it. Oh, I don't think he, you know, I don't know where You're he's going to live. I don't, I don't, I don't know where Rudy's going to live, though, because New York's always jump. been his home. Yeah. yeah. Yes, uh, Jeff. The president's daughter has a daughter, which is his granddaughter, mm -hmm. that goes to school. I think it's in New York. And they kicked them out. Oh, shit. That's kind of wild. Wow. She would ne never wear a mask. A mask. Lovely. Oh. oh. I didn't hear that one. No. 
yeah. That was is, this, is this a kid by Ivanka and Jared? Yeah. This is a devil spawn? I didn't know they had. Did you, anybody know she had a, anybody know she had a kid? Oh, you did? did. Okay. Well, see how uninformed I am? And I'm running a talk show. Well, yeah. we'll cut that out. Um, I don't get any of it. I mean, I just, you know, I, I guess I've lived long enough to see this. Oh. You know? Yes, Robert? See, I, um, I'm going to take this in a slightly different direction. Okay. I, the people that watch Newsmax, and the people that say that this is all a democratic uh, fix and all like so, you know, my my opinion is they've always been extremists. They've always been assholes and you're not going to do too much to stop them. I'm not concerned with them. Here's why. OK, what I'm concerned about are friends of mine who are reasonably intelligent people who are willing to accept Charlotte's who are willing to accept, you know, tear gassing people in Lafayette Park in order to hold up a Bible, who are willing to accept the president who tries to rig an election, all because their 401k went up a couple of bucks. Yeah. Those are the people that scare the shit out of me because those people have become so self consumed that they don't really give a shit about mm -hmm. democracy, what's best for the country. You know, those people are going to be harder to turn. The, you know, like the, the, the idiots wind up going back in their holes after a while when it's less conducive for them to come out and put up signs about homos and whatever else they yeah, did at yeah. the, you know, MAGA thing. You know what I'm saying? Like those people tend to go back in their in their in their warrens and they do their militia thing, and you kind of don't hear from them for a while. It's the college-educated guy who says, you know, I don't like a lot of the things that Trump says and does, but he's good for the economy. No, this isn't a Chinese restaurant where you pick things a la carte. You get the whole fucking package, don't you get it? Yeah. 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 I'm off the soapbox. Sorry about well, that. Well, that's good soapbox. Good soapbox to be on. Like what, that. What what'd you say, uh, Jeff? We all have people who are in our family who are just like that. Yep. Yep. Now uh I I, I can you won't be able to see this, but I, I have this here for people to to see, I went looking at Drudge to see if we could find some other things to talk about that maybe there are other items. And uh, uh, believe it or not, there isn't much to talk about. But he, he, to show you that Drudge is so against Trump. Now, you, you don't imagine that with Drudge. We always saw Drudge as this right wing, yeah. you know, gang yeah. leader. Okay. I want people to see this headline. It's a picture of Rudy Giuliani, and all it says is Giuliani. Oh, he's drooly. He's <laughs> no, Giuliani. Yeah, he's a, he's a ghoul. You know something? He should use that name and go on the air and do be the host for horror films under the name Giuliani. He looks bad, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and, of course, if, if you look, folks, again, um, this is the... He ran the version of this where the thing is running down about as far as it can run. Let me just uh, once again find this. If you look closely, right that's down. That's close to the picture right, I got. Right there. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's all the way down almost to his, past his chin. Yeah, that's the one. Yep. Yep. I caught that when I was watching TV. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Just, just incredible. Just incredible. You know. Um, I've come to call him Nosferatuat because it kind of no, looks like Nosferatu. But uh, Nosferatuat. What? Yeah. <laughs> well, you're pushing it with that one. <laughs> what do you mean? You just, you know, I mean that's Nosferatuat. Yeah. It's really bending it to your own purposes, you know. <laughs> Not that well, I'm objecting. Does. I'm not objecting. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know. 
Um, Nosferatuan. Would, couldn't you come up with something better like not Nosferatuan? Well, for Nancy Spew. Pelosi, I call her Skeletoria. So. Skeletoria. She's the, well, that's She's different. the bride of Skeletor. You really don't like her, do you? No, I do not like that neoliberal bitch. Not at all. Uh, oh, okay. Why is that? No, because uh, she played the... Uh, I'm, I'm in agreement with Ro Khanna. He, she should have taken the deal when it was available on the table. It wasn't the best. I, it wasn't the best deal. It wasn't the ideal deal for people like ourselves, yet alone a more progressively minded individual yeah. like myself. But because she wanted to play a partisan pissing match with Mitch McConnell and Donald Trump, um, she she lost a lot. Her, her majority in the House took a hit. For a good reason, yeah. because of the austerity measure she employed there and not, you know, making a compromise with. Well, I mean, Trump. the argument could be made the other yeah. way. The Trump people and the uh, uh, McConnell people wouldn't make uh, 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 try to make. Oh, a deal. I have no love for them. Don't you get know, me wrong. I don't think there was a deal to be made. No, I mean, there was I, a compromise. I, 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 no, but I, I don't think they were ready either of them to compromise. I think if she, the only compromise he would accept is if, uh, if he she went his way, which would have included a lot of money for more businesses and stuff like yep. that, rather than getting to the people. That's the problem. Yeah. That's what she was fighting for. She didn't want any more of this money to be going to airlines and. Uh, Movie companies yeah. and uh, everything else, you know, Trump's logically pals. needs logically neither did I. But you know, this being politics, the one guiding thing that uh, rules politics is perception, and people perceived her as being stuck up and unwilling to well, bend. Did and, you did you guys feel that way about her? No, nope, nobody no, here no. felt that way about her. Yes, uh, Charlie. But the, nobody on this panel will. Charlie, but the uh, McConnell also wanted businesses to be shielded from any kind of lawsuits if they didn't clean up their business and they made their people come back to work and they got and the people end up getting COVID. They could not sue their, their company. That was part of McConnell's plan. This compromise was complete immunity of businesses from lawsuits for COVID. And the other There's compromise no handed Mnuchin billions of dollars of money yeah. that he had no reason to account for. This still right. doesn't have to fact. do whatever he wants. This doesn't negate oh. the empirical fact that uh, we now have what, like 10 less people and 10 less Democrats. All of them, I think, are corporatists or work or yeah. the one. That's a side note in and of itself, but the point is, she lost, she took a hit, and uh, they're pretending like her shit doesn't stink, and that. Uh, it, well, I don't think. Well, it, I agree with you. Yeah. You, about you, her, I think she did the wrong. They, they ran wrong. They didn't run, run on the right issues. Well, you know, I'm looking here at at uh, Drudge, and of course, the other thing that becomes very. Um, Oh, uh, let, uh, looking at uh, at this, the thing that c comes up the most here is the pandemic at this point. You know. Oh yeah. And my my feeling is, I'm sick and tired of hearing all. Well, I'm, I'm, it's gratifying to hear all these Republican governors coming out now and saying we've got to lock the state down. Yeah. But for the longest time, they weren't even wearing masks for crying out loud. And the now, now, they, now the shit though. smells okay. I'm sorry. It is too late to the party now. Yeah, what? Well, two hundred thousand cases a day for the last two weeks. Jeff, you wanted to say something? Yeah, some of those uh, governors still did not have a mask. Yeah. It wasn't well, hundred. Well, uh, yeah. But, I mean, the point is that, for instance, your governor in Texas, Charlie, should be ashamed of himself. I mean, how, yeah. how many people have you lost in Texas now? Is that around 14,000, I think I read, something like that? Oh, we've lost, we have more than 20,000 people die from COVID in Texas. Oh, really? Okay, so you're up to that now. Wow. Yeah. We're we're just 40,000 cases a day just in Texas. You know something? We had, we've had to date in New York something like 33,000 deaths. But a lot of up. those were at a time when we didn't even know it was here. And it hit us. It blindsided us. And we wow. worked our asses off to get those numbers down. 
These guys had advance warning. They knew what this thing could do. They knew the lethality of it. And for, for Texas to have 20,000 is unconscionable. You know, with all that we know now. Now, the only way I can see getting us out of this is we've got to close everything down. I'm sorry. I don't want any of this. Well, you can keep your bar open till 10 o'clock at night. I mean, it's yeah, not like right. COVID says, well, yeah, I'm not going to do anything before 10 exactly. o'clock at night because I don't like to party early, you know? No. You know, I mean, it's, it's time get drunk that we... Like 10 o'clock and leave. Just close the place down. Yeah. It's time that we close this country down. That's how I felt about the school I work for, half-assed. You know, none of this hybrid shit. It's either one extreme or the other. Either you stay open or you go online only. I'm obviously a fan of the online only model because... Like you said, this virus isn't going to say, oh, on the days that these students have this have in class session, in person sessions, I won't infect them. And on the days they don't, I'll be everywhere. No, it doesn't work that way. It's got to be, you know, well, remote. the thing about going Just to like the bars that need to be closed. And, you know, the thing, I agree. The thing about kids going to school is a double edged sword because the people that are complaining the most about the kids not being able to go to school right now here in New York because, uh, our mayor decided to close down all the schools. Oh, uh, the smart decision. No, but the reason, but he has a lot of parents protesting it, and the reason he, they, and they're protesting it, it's not for a selfish reason. It's because they can't hold down a job and have yeah. their kids at home at the same time. Now, there's a solution to that, but unfortunately, the government isn't coming up with the bucks to take care of it. Oh, they're not going to do anything. Exactly. So, uh, what do we, you know? There, there should be some accommodation for being able to hire babysitters or uh, people yes. who can come in and take care of your kids during the day, so you can go work. Uh, but, but I understand why these parents are are mad about this. What they're doing in New York is they're saying we're closing down all the schools. They're going to have to take several days to completely clean the schools. Okay. Then students have to take uh, COVID tests. And if they pass them, they go to school. And if they don't pass them, they don't go to school. Uh, and, and that's the, the, the way they're thinking of handling it here. Uh, it's not a, they, we realize that it would be better if kids were going to school for the two reasons. Number one, it's a better social situation for them. And secondly, because the parents do work and they rely on the school to be the babysitter while they're out working. Um, and so consequently, that being the case, uh, it's, it's got to be taken care of. And um, it's too late. Huh? It's too late right now. It it's probably too is late. too late. It's, it's too late. We're like I said last yesterday or last night or whatever. We're in purple now, and that's too late. It, it's now, you know, Gavin says he wants to pull the e-brake, but then he's out in Napa with all his friends, you know, with no masks on. They have pictures of it now. They're putting on the Internet and everything. He went to a party or something, didn't he? He went to a party in, um, in uh, Napa, and, and they said that, yeah. And so Napa, it Napa. It was supposedly semi-outdoors, but the party was so loud that they shut the doors, so then it was indoors okay. with all those people sitting next to each other. And, if I'm know, mistaken, hot, if I'm mistaken, but did I read that Napa was a hot spot in California for COVID? Yeah, it's one of the purple areas now, and he's the one telling everybody everything's purple, and he's out doing that. So people aren't taking it seriously. Uh, yes, uh, t uh, Charlie. Yeah, I, I, what I don't understand is the Democrats passed another stimulus way back in May. The Republicans and the Senate refused to even consider anything, even talk about it until October. So what I don't understand is why the American people didn't punish the fucking Republicans for sitting on their hands and not giving people the stimulus that we need. Because I, I have an answer. I have a, I have a theory or a hypothesis, Charlie. My hypothesis is that uh, they believe, by and large, again, going on that perception thing that I talked about earlier, I said, yeah. mentioned earlier, that uh, they believed, by and large, that the Democrats that were running against these these effing Republicans uh, weren't much better than they were. Well, that's true. 
I mean, they were running all these Republican light people against them. Mm-hmm. You know? Centrism is dead. The Democratic Party has got its head shoved, shoved so far up its ass, it can't acknowledge the fact that centrism is dead. Clintonism is gone. Well, people I, don't yeah. want that. Peter they Arno. want aggressives. Peter Arno on our chat writes, that Gavin Newsom in California has enacted a statewide curfew for everything starting at 10 p.m. Is that right, to Kevin? Have you heard that? Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. Again, there's that 10 o'clock thing. Where do they come up with this 10 yeah, o'clock 10 thing? Close down somewhere. all the goddamn bars, for crying out loud. Yeah. One one the Co- Close commercial. down all the restaurants. Yes, I know the financial impact it's going to have on the state. I also know that if more people die, it's going to have even a larger financial <laughs> impact on the state. We've got to kill this thing, and the only way to kill it is to keep people from spreading it to each other. And because there was this whole thing that got political about the wearing of a mask. Largely thanks to Trump and his Grab bullshit. 25 people on the street. Yeah. How many of them do you think know that the House passed a stimulus bill mm-hmm. and it's sitting in the Senate doing nothing? Out of 25, how many do you think know that? Probably Charlie does. I do. Yeah. Most of us do. But 25 people at random on the street, I venture to bet you'd be hard pressed to find two. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, right. to tell you the truth, I often think we get the government we deserve. I agree. Well, you know, here's the big question, okay? Because Brian Ludwig brings this up. And he's 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 not wrong in it about the fact that the Democrats weren't doing their job, and that's why they lost some seats in Congress. My question is, where didn't we get the message across? Where do we, because you know we lost we lost everywhere that we well we didn't lose in the Senate we gained in the Senate but not enough to get a majority. But what did we do wrong? Where we didn't just rout. The Republicans yeah, everywhere. We showed them. Did we not get the message across? We yeah. ran milk toast liberals, Alex. That's my guess. And we didn't get the message across. The Democrats are terrible at messaging. Yup. That too. Been saying that for a long time. Well, yeah. They care about the messaging. They're just looking at Republican and Democrat. Yeah. Here, here, I'll give you an example. Okay. If you say liberal, people respond with tax and spend liberal. It, it's like a, it's like a tag that the Republicans have created to denigrate the word liberal. Or you'll hear someone call them libtards. There's like a hook. Yeah. What's the equivalent going the other way? There isn't one. Well, I mean, what, I, what I'm saying is we didn't message well in saying that, you know, hey, you know, most of the people in this country are working people. You know, they're people who work for somebody else, and all they do is they work their asses off for, you know, 30, 40 years, and uh, they make some company rich, but the company never reciprocates. And at the end, they get a gold watch. Thank you very much. We never appealed to those people. You know, there was a time when Democrats were known as the party of, of, of the worker. Yeah. But nobody, you know what I think it is? I think it's the ego of people. They don't want to think of themselves as workers. Okay, they don't well, want to think the of, party them, of Silicon Valley. They don't want to think of themselves as labor. Even the guy in Silicon Valley who's sitting there writing programs for, you know, Google, he thinks he's got part of the company because he's got a 401k. Bullshit. He's making them rich. Mm-hmm. And he's only getting a small amount of that. You know? Uh, it, we somehow have never gotten that message across in this modern day and age of of greed that it's in your best interest to vote for the Democrats because they're going to watch out for you or they're going to try to watch out for you. It's not to say they do a very good job of it because I knew Brian was going to jump on me for that. No, <laughs> yeah. they don't. You know, so. Uh, so the stay, a stay-at-home order from, <clears throat> for, for California, everybody's basically in the purple tier just about. But they said, yeah, the stay-at-home, home, uh, fi- uh, 10 p.m., stay-at-home till mm-hmm. 5 a.m., Effective November 21st until December 21st. Things you can do. 
You can go to the grocery store, drug store, walk your dog, or get takeout from a restaurant. Okay. Hey, Brian, uh, guess what? I think uh, Ohio, parts of Ohio are in purple, too, Cleveland being one of them. Yeah, that, that's that's our Bay Area right there. I, yeah, no, you can't focus on that, but yeah, they basically they have everything except for Marin County, uh, San Francisco, and uh, San Mateo County is red. But we're yeah, all, all but Vermont. I just looked at a chart. All but Vermont and like Maine or no, no, I think Vermont and New Hampshire or some shit. Forty-seven states of all fifty states are red. Well, are we we red. don't have purple as a designation here in New York. I don't think you do over New Jersey either, do you, Richard? I don't know. Robert Honestly, Rudd? I don't know. Huh. I don't either. Black is will be next, I guess. Yeah, because I know that what what, what, what I what I hear Cuomo say, yellow is when we hit three percent. Four percent is. Uh, is orange, and I guess red is an, is anything over like four point five. So, and then in each of these designations, they have certain rules, you know. And when you get to red, don't even leave the house. Okay. And on on a lighter note, have has anyone seen the meme uh, that's running around the picture of the Last Supper? And Jesus is standing up saying, according to Cuomo, three of you got to take a hike. <laughs> mm. No, I did see a meme, though, of Thanksgiving dinner, you know, the 50s, 1950s family uh, serving Thanksgiving wait, dinner. Wait, wait, only instead of a you know, yeah. turkey on a plate, it's the coronavirus. Wait, wait, wait. I'm trying to think. Wait, wait. I don't get the joke, though. Cuomo says wait, the, the Last Supper. Mm -hmm. There are 12, 12 people. people gathered at the Last Supper in the famous painting. Yeah. And you can't have a gathering. According to oh, Cuomo. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Three of you got to take a hike. That's how f how thick I'm getting these days. You know, <laughs> I'm punchy lately. Um, you know, I really think. That's the whole state. Oh, jeez almighty. Oh, but God. that's what Texas should look like. By the way, isn't that, isn't, that also, isn't that also where the fires were? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> uh you know, I got to tell you, I have been, I, I, I'm, I'm bumping into walls now. I'm, I, I find myself suddenly every night, even though I got like eight and a half hours sleep last night, this evening I'm watching the queen and I fall asleep. And I, I just think it's this whole thing with the Corona fatigue that I've got. And I don't know if you're feeling it, but man, I am just, you know, I do the show every night and I look at the clock to see how much time I got left because I don't have the, I don't have energy, mm. you know, and is that, do you, Brian, uh, Neary, do you know about this COVID fatigue and what the symptoms are of it? No, no, but everyone's suffering from it. I mean, yeah. the tiredness and everything? Even I'm going, even I'm going to work every day, but I still come home and the weekends can't do anything and. You know, come home half day and still can't really do anything. Now my gym just closed. Yeah. Yeah. Like three or four weeks of opening. And they, they were doing really good. Mass and a separation. And geez, there's only about eight people in that big gym at a time every day I was there. And now they closed up again. Yeah. But I mean, I, I just am. Do you feel it, Jeff? Oh, yeah. Indoors all the time? Absolutely. You know? I mean, I mean, I've got a big apartment here. I've got 2,500 square feet. Thank God. God for that, you know, because I, I at least the walls don't climb in on me. But I, you know, I'll, I'll lie in bed at night and I'll get really depressed over the idea of, you know, I ain't getting any younger. And we were planning on taking that trip to Europe, mm. you know, or I'd like to go out to California to see my friends. And I got a lot of them out there like Brian. And uh, I'd like to go see my closest friend, Jeff. And yep. I can't go up to Connecticut. That's right. Okay. And he can't come down here. So, you know, I mean, you know. And now, here's the thing we were. You got of, people who can't visit their parents or children, too. So yeah, well, even now we got, thanks, we got Thanksgiving coming up. Okay. That too. And a lot of, you know, now in my, our case, we're probably going to have a Thanksgiving dinner here. And we're having uh, Shecky's coming over. But Shecky doesn't go out. I know Shecky doesn't go out, right? No, he hasn't really been anywhere. Right, right. So I know he's safe. Mm -hmm. And then uh, 
Marjorie has a girlfriend named Natalia, who is Jack's wife. And she, uh, uh, according to Marjorie, she hasn't been out just to go to the store to get food, and that's it. You know, she does all her work from home. And she's in a little one-bedroom apartment. She must be going Bonkers. nuts. Bonkers. Yeah. Okay, and then Marjorie has another friend, and she uh, she she uh, teaches yoga and stuff to seniors, uh, and she gets tested regularly. Although Marjorie asked her to get tested today, just to make sure. I think we've got a safe crowd coming over, okay? But Marjorie goes, "Gee, they're saying on TV, just don't even do Thanksgiving," and I think it's because Thanksgiving primarily is the kids come home. Yeah. From college, right? No. Yep. And you don't want that to happen because you don't want them getting on public transportation and coming here. Uh, mm -hmm. So that could spread it. But people are going to do it anyway. So how do we how do we make it safer all the way around? I mean, I've got my little, I mean, everybody, these are friends of ours. And when they walk in the door, I'm hitting them with the temperature gun <laughs> just to make sure, <laughs> you know. Yeah. What happens if they start coughing? Oh boy. What? <laughs> Get the weight ready. Going home. Have we figured out when people are contagious? Oh, well, the temperature was getting. Yeah, I, so. uh, I know they're false. You know, they're people who don't have symptoms and they're asymptomatic and they can still spread it. Yep. Uh, but I'm wondering, do they have any kind of temperature? I guess they I don't. I often wonder if I'm in that category. What? Asymptomatic. Why? Why would you think that? Why would I think that? Because uh, one, uh, my profession. Yeah, bus and driver. Two, school the bus extra driver. duty I, the extra duty I do is I disinfect the buses as well, and I've been doing that since well, school reopened, which was back in September eighth, and but, I've been doing doing that five days a week. But what are you doing to protect yourself when you do that? Uh, <laughs> I just wear my uh, I just wear my uh, gator mask. Yeah, but what my question is, what do you? Uh, do, do you, what do you do to disinfect it? I mean, uh, we have a solution. We put in uh, these backpack units. And then you go around spraying. These smaller guns. Yeah. And we spray the seats, spray the door handles. That's what we were told to do. Spray I the seats, top I, and bottom, I, I, and spray I, the back of the seats as Brian, well. Brian Neary's going, uh uh, what? I wouldn't worry about that stuff. Yeah, because at the very beginning, they were panicking people. If, if, if somebody had it and they touched some plastic, it lasts for so many hours. Stainless steel lasted for like a day or something. And they yeah. keep all that stuff. It, it's a respiratory disease where you're getting it from air droplets. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I, I know I know everybody's worried about the touching of stuff and I, I don't yeah. I mean, I think the reason why we have such a bad problem right now is people got it because they didn't wear masks. Yep. That's and it, plain works. and simple. You know. We had a whole population. Well, I wasn't at a party, but if their kids were, you know, or something. Yeah. But, I mean, so I am just, you know, I'm exhausted all the time, and I, I think it's this COVID fatigue. And I mentioned this to a doctor that I was went to. I can't remember for what now, since I go to so many of them these days. Uh, and I said, I think I have, you know, I've been, I have COVID fatigue. I'm tired all the time. And he said, yep, that's it. You know, that's, that's going around. You know what I noticed for me, Alex? I noticed at night I can't sleep like I used to. I just stay up sometimes like four in the morning. Well, well, at least I, you're not I, angry or suicidal. So you ready for this one? I I think I know what day this is. Uh, it, it's Thursday. Yes. Okay. Yes. But there are times when I go, what day is this? You know, if I'm not doing a show for a couple of days, it, I got that three days where I don't have anything going on. I don't know whether it's uh, Saturday, Sunday, or Monday. As long as you say it's a day that ends in Y, you're you're in you're in the clear. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I always that's what I always tell myself when I get my yeah. But but, but you know what I'm saying? I mean, you oh, know, no. uh, there are all kinds of things where you kind of like just go, like I've been loopy. I I, I can't. Uh, there are things that I normally do here every day. And I do them in a certain order and get them done, right? But like I said, at least you're not overly stressed, angry, or suicidal because you just jogged my memory because I remember hearing on the news, a uh, talk show, I think, locally, that there was a Pitt student, my alma mater. I used to go to the University of Pitts, Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a Pitt student who committed suicide on account of the uh, anxiety that he was enduring from all this isolation and shit. 
Wow. Hmm. wow. I know, right? That's what I said. Where did you go to school? University yeah. of Pittsburgh. Oh, okay. The Oakland main campus. Uh, because uh, so UC Davis, they did a study about COVID mm-hmm. fatigue, and they say it's true. They say to cope with it, exercise, <clears throat> exercise, oh, yeah. exercise, talking like this, constructive thinking, mindfulness, and gratitude. Yeah, you got to exercise more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, I got that bike there. I've, I haven't used it lately. You Created know. another. Yeah, you need to do it. Yeah. And Charlie, what about you? You're using your bicycle, right? Yeah. I, I, I said that's got. I don't have the COVID fatigue because I exercise every day. I haven't missed one day since March 13th. How so often do you get on? Is it a bike? Right, it's a bike. Yeah. Right? I go off for walks. How, how often? Something. How long do you stay on it? Uh, 15 minutes every day. Is that all? Yeah, yeah I maybe push I push ups and sit ups and stuff too, but 15 minutes every day, that's plenty. Marjorie. I you talk about the COVID 15, I haven't gained a pound. Me neither. Uh, I have. I gained and then I started going to the gym since the 25th, and I was doing elliptical. I was doing up to 45 minutes nonstop the last two weeks, and then now they shut everything down. I'm Brian, do you have any equipment at your house? Yeah, I just got a couple things. So I want I don't have any really good cardio stuff, but I, I have no excuse. I have a school across the street. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I just gotta get out. So well no, I I've gained weight, but I think some of it had to do with the radiation and the whole prostate thing, you know. That that caused uh, some weight gain in me. Those seeds are heavy. But it's not that they're heavy. <laughs> heavy but, metal, yeah. <laughs> um, and by the way, I heard from Phil last night was saying when I was talking to him that radio you can get radiation brain you know that that wow. lasts for quite a while where you, you you know you can't remember stuff and so on you know well if chemo can make you lose your hair yeah. i guess it makes sense that it would go inside your head and- you know who hasn't joined the conversation much uh here uh, and we should say talk to him a little bit steve you haven't jumped in on anything any of these things appealing to you um. I'm just listening, trying to learn. Trying to learn? You mean from this group, you think you're going to learn? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. No, that's a, that's a bad assumption, right, Robert? Nah. Go yeah. somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think we're like, I uh, was going to ask, where are they going to do the, the inauguration? Like, they usually do it usually in Washington. Where is it? Uh, the Lincoln Monument with that big pool? Is that where it is every yeah. year? Well, no, it's it, it. I think Capitol it's, building. It's the Capitol building, and the Capitol building does does it? No, it doesn't look out on the on the uh, on the plaza on, on the reflecting pool, does it? No, I don't. I think. have a question for Steve. Well, it does because it's probably going to be indoors, right? I I don't know what they're going to do. They haven't even talked about that yet. Oh. It's but, never been indoors. But before. I'm sure there'll be less people there than were at the Trump inauguration. <laughs> so Trump can be really happy about that. You know? That was the uh, first lie that came out of their mouth. Man, they didn't stop after that. That's for sure. More people I, than ever showed up before at an inauguration. And then I'm going, yeah, I think I saw that Obama thing. And it was five pretty, pictures. You know. Yes, uh, Brian Ludwig. Yeah, I just have a question for Steve, uh, our Canadian friend, um, logistical business related one. Uh, Do you do a lot of deliveries in the U.S. and are you regional? Are you over the road? How does that work on your side? Run to the West Coast from Toronto. Okay. Uh, I do a lot of California, Oregon, Washington, mostly Um, California. Do you deliver general freight? Do you uh, do uh, do, uh, like tanker or? Dry van, we do hazmat, uh, hazmat. great food, whatever needs to go. Uh, We do a lot of wine out of Napa Valley, too, for the CBO, which is our liquor control board of Ontario. Uh, You have one. We have one in Pennsylvania. Yeah. They're a pain in the ass, just like Utah. Well, you used to do, you used to to, uh, deliver uh, human organs, didn't you? I did. I used to call on this program while doing so as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he, uh, he, he, he did that. Did that the, is that considered hazardous? I mean, physically? No. No, no it's bio. 
It's bio. Oh, you well, you were a truck driver too, Kevin. Yes, thirty-one. God, years. is there anybody on the show tonight that wasn't a truck driver? <laughs> no, I wasn't a truck driver. <laughs> that was, was that all concerned? hazmat, though. Yeah. Huh? You were all hazmat. I was a suicide jockey for thirty-one years. Oh wow. Were you a tanker too, or were you just drive in? No. <laughs> Well, I, I had tanker endorsement. But I was mostly uh, gas and chemicals. Oh, wow. okay. Yeah. Compressed gas. Yeah, yeah. Well, wait, wait a minute. Now, let me get this. Isn't Toronto on the east side? Uh, east. Yeah. So, so you go all the way to California is where you go, right, uh, Steve? Yeah. Wow. That's. It's twenty seven hundred miles. Quite a bit of driving. Yeah. Yep. I think the first time you called you, you were somewhere east coast and then coming to California, coming to LA or something, huh? Right. Well you 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 called the was it the four o'clock show you called or was it this one? Yeah. The one o'clock, yeah. The, four the four o'clock show. one o'clock show. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he was in his truck. Yeah. And now he's not in his truck. How how long do you take off between tours of duty, as it were? wife at home might take about four days five yeah. days and then you go out and you do a run yeah and that is how many days usually uh, 10 to 12 oh wow. wow sometimes longer sometimes i'll do the triangle trip which is you know kevin would know that this uh you head out west and you go down south and you go back east and do the like the triangle Ooh. I might go to California and then go back up to north to BC or to Alberta and then back to Ontario like that. I hate to think how many miles you've driven in your lifetime. Oh, a lot. <laughs> a lot? <laughs> yep. Much. I've been driving for 20 years. Yeah. You know, so what about a seven month break in between? Because I was. Uh, I had a job where in the factory where my wife worked for yeah. a while. Yeah. So I went to work and that didn't work out because it was an auto parts plant and mm -hmm. I just couldn't keep up with the speed of the of their Yeah. Their quotas. So I just went back into the truck. Yeah. Uh, do you have any yeah, do you have any do you have any kids? Uh no kids. No kids. Okay, well at least that makes it easier for you to go away for, you know. Uh, yeah. a, a week and a half at a time and not have to worry about what's going on at home. Yes, Brian? Like, I'd like to go away for a week at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Where do I apply, right, Brian? <laughs> Anytime you need a babysitter, you know, I'm available, you know. I mean, how difficult can she be? <laughs> oh, 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 famous last words. Famous last words. Yeah. I'll send you videos. Okay, you'll see her go crazy. Hey, everybody. That's a good way to end the program tonight. Thank Brian you. Ludwig, thank you so much for joining us, as well as Charlie Wallace, Jeffrey Stein, Robert Natale, Brian Neary, Kevin, uh, Tony, who has left us with his hideous wallpaper again. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, there he is. He's back in. Bye, Tony. And uh, and and Steve, who uh, calls us infrequently, but uh, it's nice to have you here. It really is. Call some more, will you? Especially when you're out on the road. That's nice, too. And everybody right now, why don't you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the citizen panel for tonight. Uh, they're uh, fading off into the sunset. There'll be a new citizen panel right after we're through here on uh, the show with uh, uh, Jack Bishop called The Intersection. He'll be using uh, Skype, and the Skype number is GabNet Live. Uh, I will see you again tomorrow night uh, at 10.30, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, be safe out there, really safe, okay? And don't take any chances. We're close, too close to a vaccine for you to go dying on us. Plus, I don't have that much of an audience anyway, and I need everybody I can get. Stay safe out there and wear a mask.
Night, everybody.